everyone, David Aragona and Craig Mulkowski are taking a look at the feature race at Belmont Park on Saturday. It's the grade two bed of roses going seven furlongs for the Phillies and Mayors on the dirt, race nine on a 10 race card. And Craig, this field has only attracted five runners, but it's one of those five horse fields that's definitely not lacking in the quality department. No, that's for sure. I mean, we have the returning Eclipse Award champion, and even though she's a heavy favorite on the morning line, I do think there's some others that people will need to consider. Yes, that uh, morning line favorite, the number one, Good Night Olive, definitely comes in with some of the best form, but she is not facing an easy spot here as the three runners drawn towards the outside, Wicked Halo, Dr. B, and Caramel Swirl, all have credentials to win a race like this. And even the long shot in the race, Begin, is coming off some nice speed figures. So it's a pretty competitive bed of roses for just a five-horse field. Before we get to the main contenders, let's take a look at the time form U.S. pace projector for this race. And Craig, I guess one of the strengths of that morning line favorite, Goodnight Olive, is that she does possess good tactical speed. And that could come in handy in a race where there's not a whole lot of front-running speed signed on. I would agree with that, and particularly after a trip last time where she got stuck down inside, she draws the rail again. But I would imagine they're going to be a little bit more aggressive and, and make, make sure that they don't get themselves boxed in here. Yeah, frankly, I'll be really interested to see how Irad Ortiz rides Goodnight Olive because he's really gotten in the habit of taking her off the pace, raiding her in behind horses like they did last time. But she does possess that natural speed to potentially go forward from her inside draw here. So we'll be interested to see how she is placed in the early stages of this race. Speaking of Goodnight Olive, let's begin the discussion with her and we'll take a look at her Breeders' Cup triumph from last November when she got the better of a pretty competitive field of 11 other fillies and mares including wicked halo who is back in that race she is the gray filly who is chasing goodnight olive home on this day and craig goodnight olive got the kind of trip that we've seen her accustomed to getting in recent starts this day where she raided in behind foes made that move off the far turn the takeover that didn't work as well last time though in the derby city distaff when she was beaten as the one to two favorite actually finishing just behind wicked halo and it's been a lot of criticism of Irad Ortiz's ride that day, but I also think that Goodnight Olive sort of put him in that difficult position because she didn't seem the most willing to angle off the rail when he really wanted to at the top of the stretch. Yeah, I would agree with that. I think it was more of a case where he put her in a good spot and the others rode a smart race and kind of made sure as the heavy favorite that she didn't have an easy path out. And as you say, she was a little reluctant to take it. That said, I think she still ran a really good race. I have no knocks on her that day. You can see how consistent she is speed figure wise. And if she's able to keep running those lower 120 type speed figures, she's going to be tough to beat. Yeah, my concern with her is that it felt like the narrative coming out of that race is that she would have won without that trouble. And when I watched that race back, I sort of disagree. To me, she never looked like a winner of that race. She might have beaten Wicked Halo for second, but he was really riding her an upper stretch to maintain her position in behind those runners. She was in a full out drive until about the eighth pole, but she really uh, couldn't have anywhere to go, kind of stuck in that spot in behind horses. But I didn't think she was ever going to win that day. And I feel like she's going to be bet in this race like she actually did win last time. So I'll be interested to see how that all shakes out. And the horse that she was facing off against last time and also in that Breeders' Cup is the number three, Wicked Halo. And there's not too much to knock about her form, Craig. She's running speed figures that are very comparable to those of Goodnight Olive, actually really on the same scale as that filly. Beat her last time, albeit with a little bit of help race riding that foe. But I also thought her Breeders' Cup wasn't so bad because she arguably had to wait a little bit longer in traffic that day, whereas Goodnight Olive got the jump on her. Yeah, and I think another excuse that day is that she was coming off just two weeks rest. Uh, she was rushed into the Breeders' Cup a little bit, turned back in distance a little bit off that Raven run. I think that was one of the longer seven furlong races, if memory serves. Maybe not, but she definitely had some excuses. Uh, her speed figures are competitive. I think she is the main danger in here. I just, the one thing, I, as we'll see when I get to my selections, I have getting passes. Oh, I agree with you. I don't think Goodnight Olive was going to win that day. I do think she would have beaten Wicked Halo. 
Let's move on to a couple of fillies coming out of a different prep race, and that was the grade three vagrancy at Belmont Park. We'll check out the stretch run of this race, and Caramel Swirl in the Godolphin colors is making a big move from towards the back of the pack to mow this field down. To her outside is Dr. B, who was also coming from off the pace this day. She had some significant trouble on the far turn, getting shuffled back in traffic, but that allowed Caramel Swirl to get the jump on her, but take nothing away from Caramel Swirl, Craig, because you could see she was wins this race gear down at the end definitely was back in top form for this one but she'll be coming back in five weeks and she's a horse that has had much longer layoffs in between all of her prior starts as we've seen her pretty sparingly over the past couple of seasons yeah when she shows up she's really usually pretty good other than that tampa race where she just was a total no-show my big concern with her is the speed figures they just don't stack up to the other two we've mentioned you'll note next to her 111 last time we actually did a breakout and i was pretty sure i remember but i went and checked just before we recorded this and that was actually a race that came back really slow on the numbers and it got an on the uh, raw figures and it got a, an upgrade i don't have any problem with the upgrade had i change i use the same variant as the other races that have been like a a hundred speed figure which meant it would have made no sense for the others in there but she still has some room to go to catch the uh the top two on the morning line odds yeah, it was definitely a race where they weren't moving that quickly up front. So she did well to pass them and win so easily. But like you said, she does have to get a little faster, at least with the number four, Dr. B, who was beaten by Caramel Swirl last time. But that was her first start off a layoff. And Dr. B does have at least one lofty speed figure to get back to. That was when she won the Gopher Wand at the end of last season, stretching out to a mile. And given the fact she got the mile that day, I don't mind the seven furlongs for her in this bed of roses. And one feather in her cap, Craig, is that she did handle a sloppy track very well that day. And there is some rain in the forecast for Saturday at Belmont. Yeah, I would definitely look for that if I was going to upgrade her. I'm always a little bit leery of horses with one big number when it comes over a sloppy track. But if the track turns up sloppy, I could see it. Uh, otherwise, she did have a troubled trip last time, so I think she's better than what the number would show. I think the truth is probably somewhere in between that 122 we see and the 108. Uh, but I would also upgrade her if it, if it rains on Saturday. And then the final horse that completes this five-runner Better Roses field is the number two, Begin. Let's take a look at her last race at Belmont Park when she was coming off a layoff and found a much easier spot than this, beating N1X Allowance foes. But she did it the way that you're supposed to when you're the four to five favorite as she drew away quite easily to win this race by nearly 10 lengths. And she's another one that would not mind a little moisture in the ground because you can see she's winning over a sloppy track here. With her, Craig, I question the seven furlongs just a little little bit because watching a lot of her races sometimes feels like the farther she goes the less finish she has yeah, that would make sense to me. Uh, she's another that had the big figure in the sloppy track, but it was more of a logical progression from her earlier races. She seems to keep moving forward. Uh, I do wonder how she's going to deal with that inside post and maybe having to deal with Goodnight Olive. If I had to guess, I'd say the pace projector has it right. She'll probably scoot to the lead and maybe Goodnight Olive is quick enough to, to get position to her outside flank. And that's not what a horse I'd want to have bearing down on me most of the race and I think it'll probably spell her doom. Let's move on to our picks for this race. And Craig, I found this to be a pretty interesting one for just a five-runner field. And as you can see from my picks, I'm taking a big stand against Goodnight Olive here. I don't like her in this race. I haven't been thrilled with either one of her races this season. I thought that she's been lugging in in the stretch both times. I don't like to see that. She just looks a little unfocused in the stretch of her races. And at a short price, getting bet like she would have won last time, I just think she's negative value, at least in my opinion. And I'm going to take Dr. B out of that vagrancy. I thought she had a valid experience excuse based on the trouble on the far turn and just hoping she can get back to that big effort that we saw out of her last year. Yeah, I went with Goodnight Olive. Not that I think she's value because I don't, but she's not a horse I particularly want to bet against in here. I considered Wicked Halo pretty strongly, but it still stuck in my mind that I just thought Goodnight Olive was better last time. She keeps running those same consistent speed figures, so that's who I put on top. The number one, good night, Olive, for Craig. And the number four, Dr. B for me in the Better Roses on Saturday at Belmont Park. Good luck if you're playing the races this weekend.